What's up guys, it's your boy, Barca boy 103 Today we're going to be doing the match preview for Barcelona versus Getafe in La Liga. We are finally back in league action for the first time in two weeks, where of course the main objective this season for the club is to walk away with the league title this season. We're on a good run. We are of course top. We have good momentum, but the momentum continues again. But before we get into it, make sure you guys smash that like button down below. Let's try to get the 200 likes this video. Be very much appreciated. Also, if you're new, make sure you subscribe down below if you haven't already. And let's get into it. Kickoff time for this match will be taking place at 6.30 p.m. local time. So we do have the early kickoff this weekend, usually around about four hours earlier than usual. And this match will be taking place at the beautiful Spotify camp now, where in Barcelona's last five matches have not played at home. We have not been there since the Espanyol match on December the 31st. This was Barcelona's first game at the Camp Nou of 2023. And the referee for this match has also been confirmed. On the pitch will be Iglesia Villanueva and on the VR it will be Cesar Soto Grando. Let's start off by taking a look at the league table where Barcelona currently sit top of La Liga on 41 points. After playing 16 matches, we do have 13 wins, two draws, and one loss. And if you look at our last five games in the league, four wins, and one draw. Real Madrid closely behind in second place, three points behind on 38 points. After playing 16 matches, they do have 12 wins, two draws, and two losses. Look at their last five games in the league. Not the greatest of form, two wins, two losses, and one draw. But here's the crazy part. Real Sociedad, three points behind Real Madrid and only six points off Barcelona in third place. After playing 17 matches, they do have 11 wins, two draws, and four losses in their last five matches. Their form is the exact same as Barcelona, but also important to keep in mind, they have played one more game than us, as of course we did not play because we went to the Spanish Super Cup tournament. Atletico Madrid on 28 points. They're very, very far behind, but Atletico Madrid right now are in the top four battle with Betis and a few other teams as well now if you look at this top four of course this will be in the corner finals of the of the Copa del Rey Barcelona first versus third Sociedad second Real Madrid versus fourth Atletico Madrid so that Copa del Rey tie is gonna be very very interesting but right now Barcelona do have momentum they do have a good lead in La Liga and since they're playing Catafi at home that should be three points no matter what now if you take a look at the top teams and who will they be facing this weekend real sociedad will be traveling to real vallecano atletico madrid will host real Valladolid, and real madrid will be traveling to the new san mames to face athletic club now real madrid tend to do very well against athletic club but in that stadium in the new san mames you just never know valverde and it's valverde could be doing us a favor and our cold difference are for you know being first in the league could end up being six points the bigger the gap the more confidence the team has and the less confidence real madrid have so barcelona have to keep going keep their lead at the top any drop points would be catastrophic they have to go for this league and real madrid are closely behind and not giving barcelona any breathing room now if you take a look at our opponents in getafe and where they're currently standing in the league table they're currently sat in 15th place in La Liga on 17 points. After playing 17 matches, they have four wins, five draws, and eight losses. You look at their last five games in the league, three losses, one win, and one draw. So they're averaging right now a point a game, very, very poor, and they're also only one point off the relegation zone. Let's now take a look at our opponents in Getafe. Like I just mentioned, so far in the league, they're not doing too well, literally averaging a point a game, and they're only one point off the relegation zone. Now, the last time we faced them was, I believe, the second last game of the season, last season, where we drew nil-nil away from home. We already qualified for the Champions League. We had absolutely nothing to fight for. We're just going out there, going through the motion. The lineup is very, very different to what we expect right now. The whole entire front three is not going to play. Of course, Fran Torres is suspended. Ricky Poch is gone, Longlet is gone, Minget is gone, Danny Alves is gone. So I think this is not a really good game to go off of what we expect from Getafe tomorrow. Now, if you take a look at Getafe's last six matches in all competition, in their last match, they lost 2 1 to Espanyol. They also lost 2 1 to Sevilla. They lost 3 2 in the Cup to Levante. They beat Mallorca 2 0. They won their second round game in the Copa 2 0. And they also lost a friendly before, you know, 
the World Cup during that time, 1-0 as well. So let's take a look quickly at the last three matches in all competition. Firstly, the Cup loss to Levante, where in this match, they just weren't up to scratch. Although they were competing in the Magic of the Cup, they were, you know, feeding off of that, but they were still so poor. And Levante did leak a few goals at the back, but it was a very, very dominant performance from Levante. And Hataf in this match went with the 5-3-2 formation, and we can't expect that against Barcelona tomorrow. Next up is their 2-1 loss to Sevilla. Now this is a bit more, not end-to-end -end game, but a bit more of a competitive game, although Hatafi's defense was very, very poor. Their midfield was competing with Sevilla's, but in the end, Sevilla did walk away with the victory, probably because of that being at home advantage. And finally, their 2-1 loss to Espanyol at home again the 5-3-2 formation we are definitely going to be seeing this tomorrow at the Camp Nou and it's just the problem with Hatafe is that their defense isn't that great and their transition from defense to midfield is very very poor and that's why they're not that as effective they do get some goals here and there because they have two great strikers in Borja Mayoral and Enos Unal but they have difficulties creating and also difficulties in defense and we saw this in this match and that's probably why Espanyol walked away with the victory so overall final thoughts on Hatafe they can do a job on a day maybe but they're still a very very poor team you know losing in the cup early on not doing too well in the league the recent form hasn't been that great one point off the relegation zone so on paper they're not looking too great but against the big team they parked the bus really well and hit us on the counterattack. you just never know now the base manager of course is Kike Sanchez Florence whose record against Barcelona is very poor so hopefully that will continue tomorrow as well and just a play players to look out for they do have some good players in around their team you know they have David Soria in goal the Jenny in defense Damian Suarez at right back so so, so, so annoying. Carlos Alenia in midfield, the former Barcelona player. They have Porto. They have Borja Mayoral and uh, Enes Unal as well. Adam Bari, who I believe at the moment is injured. I don't think he will be fit for this match. So they do have some quality here and there that players that, you know, some Barcelona might take. But the problem is their collectiveness is the issue. Sakita Sanchez Falls right now is on the verge of being sacked. They need a result in this game. Hopefully they don't get that, but all they're really gonna do in this game, very, very simple. 5-3-2, probably even a 5-4-1. Park the bus, counterattack, easy as you like. And of course, Barcelona has been struggling against this this season. So again with Barcelona, create chances, finish those chances because they won't come around that often. And of course, be strong on the counterattack. Let's now take a look at the squad list. The squad list of this match has been released and confirmed, and it is as follows. Ter Stegen, Bellerin, Araujo, Busquets, Dembele, Pedri, Ansu Fati, Naki Pena, Christensen, Alonso, Jordi Alba, Kessier, Roberto, De Young, Rafinha, Koundé, Eric Garcia, Balde, Gabi, Pablo Torre, Anna Dennis, and Alec Kron, of course, from the B team, essentially replacing Memphis Depay. Now, of course, Lewandowski and Ferran Torres are both suspended for this match and also for this weekend's match against Gerona. Other than that, no other surprises. Araujo and Frankie Dion coming back in the squad after being rested midweek against Ceuta in the cup. Time now to get into Xavi's press conference reaction. This press conference this morning, of course, he's asked a lot of questions from the media. Also, some very good topics being discussed about player sales, January signings, future of the squad, and future some players as well. Also, his opinions on some of the players' developments and adaptation of the squad as well. Let's go and see what our gaffa had to say this morning in the presser. He came out saying that Getafe is a tough team. They will defend very well, and it's going to be a complicated match tomorrow. Then asked, of course, about the departure of Memphis Depay, which has now been confirmed saying that Memphis has asked us to leave to join Atletico Madrid. He was not comfortable with the situation in the team. We'll see if we can sign a replacement. He was then asked about Danny Alves' situation. If you don't know, Danny Alves right now is in prison in Barcelona. Just put a good Google search and you'll find it. He said, it's hard to express my opinion. I'm surprised and shocked because I know Danny Alves very well. Asked about being drawn against Sociedad in the Cup, saying that we'll face one of the best teams in Spain right now. Of course, we looked at the league table, only six points behind us, but we'll also be playing at home, which will be giving us the advantage. Then asked about the option to buy Carrasco part of the Memphis Depay deal, so that yes, we have that option and we'll see whether or not in the summer if we execute it. He's giving us a quick update injury-wise on Araujo and Frankie de Jong. Then Araujo and Frankie are available, but it's true they had some minor discomfort. We'll decide on them tomorrow, but from now on, every match 
is important. Gabby is one of the players we've seen the most video sessions with. He has matured in a very short time. He knows when he has to make fouls. Every day he competes better with extra heart and courage with each he plays. I'm currently watching many matches because I'm a Barcelona coach. I watch many matches, although at home they don't like that. But this is my passion. He's asked whether or not the game is dying and that they should adapt to like Kings League rules like PK's thing where there's like you know different rules like stuff like that i don't think the football has lost his passion is what chap is saying he's then asked if he wants a replacement for memphis depay will he get one really he said that no i didn't ask for one i've already said that i'm very happy with the squad if we get a replacement great if not i will call the players from the b team then asked about the victory against Real Madrid, he said apparently Ancelotti is, you know, getting a lot of scrutiny and blah, blah, blah. I don't really care about Real Madrid. I need this Chavi. Chavi said, look, the victory against Real Madrid gave us a lot of confidence. Then asked about Andreas Christensen, saying that when he plays, he gives us confidence at the back. He always plays with the ball, doesn't make mistakes. He's happy and he's the ideal player for this club. We also not want to forget that he is young and he's still adapting to our language. Then ask again about Real Madrid. We don't compare ourselves to any team. We always look at ourselves. Then ask about Ansu Fati. And Ansu Fati is an important player for us. And he always makes the difference. He can score goals in many different ways. Then ask about Ferran Torres' situation in current form. To the Ferran Torres is fine. But he misses the goal. And that makes him lose his confidence. We have blind faith in him. And he still needs to score goals. His number with Barcelona are not that bad at all. So he's saying, like we, like I've been saying, saying that Ferran Torres... His play, you know, moving the ball from the from the attack, from the midfield to the attack, playing his position, everything that he does from the, you know, middle of the pitch to the final third is good. But just finishing in front of goal and getting the goal is what Fran is missing. Chavez then asked about Zubi Mendy, who of course will be facing on Wednesday midweek in the Cope. He said that I don't like talking about other players that are not part of the team and have a valid contract. We have to be better than Sociedad, but right now we are focusing on Getafe. He then asked about Kessiers, and that Kessiers is an important player for me, and he has taken a step forward. The game against Ceuta, he played at a level that has to continue and that he has to keep showing. Then asked about PK's King the league he said that look i don't follow it but i know the club has an agreement with them i wish pk all the best the final the semi-final and final of the king's uh, king's league will be being played at the camp now and laporta was there on the live stream yesterday talking with gerard Mero and pk and it was really really crazy he then asked about he then asked about alejandro baldes and he has the personality and that makes him the difference he's from la masia he works well with the academy players baldes is fast and strong and great in 1v1 situations as well then asked about angel alacron and that i really like him he has already trained with us before he can play as a nine as a seven or as an 11 too he scores goals and he is very versatile and lastly chavin could off was asked about the la masia players that we follow all of them and that too every single Single weekend we also have persons who track their performance those with a strong mentality will get the opportunity to play in the first team and that concluded Chavi's press comments reaction had the match against Getafe tomorrow let's now get into the lineup prediction we're gonna start with the manager of course Chavi Hernandez I'm gonna try my best to predict this lineup it will be very difficult to predict of course we got a midweek game in the cup then straight away Saturday against Gerona you don't want to play your you know strongest team in probably the weakest and less important game of the week but what Chavi do of course arresting all his first team players midweek as well against Ceuta I think Chavi will go with this lineup on the screen right now I think he'll go with Ter in goal a back four of Kunde, Araujo, Christensen, Alejandro Balde, midfield three of Busquets, De Jong, and Pedri, and a front three of Usman Dembele, Ansu Fati, and Gavi playing as the false winger, similar to what we saw, of course, in the Super Cup final against Real Madrid. Now, with Ferran and Lewandowski being out, Barcelona only has three first-team natural forwards in Ansu Fati, Dembele, and Rafinha. I think Xavi's objective is to have one of them on the bench to come on if we need it. If you want to go a bit more attacking, so I do believe that Xavi will go with the four midfield. In the back line, the only one change I could see is Araujo not starting. So you could bring in, you know, Sergio Roberto. You could bring in Eric Garcia. You could even bring in Jordi Alba and then push Kunde center and then put Alejandro Balde at right back. I think if that is the case, if you can't play Araujo, I see Kunde coming centrally and then Sergio Roberto coming in at right back. Again, with De Jong, he could may, start, may not start because he does have discomfort. Hopefully, Xavi plays Kessier, but I think if that's the case, he will drop Gabi back 
and then risk it and play Rafinha and have Dembele onto Rafinha as a front three. But overall, with the current squad, with everyone fit in the squad list, I think this is the line that Chavi will select for this match. But of course, let me know what you think Chavi's going to go with down in the comments below. Now I'm going to show you guys my lineup, what I would do if I was a Barcelona coach. And I have made a few changes from Chavi's lineup prediction. And I've gone with this lineup on the screen right now. I've gone with Ter Stegen in goal, a back four of Koundé, Araujo, Christensen, Alejandro Balde, a midfield three of De Jong, Kessier, and Pedri, and a front three of Rafinha, Ansu Fati, and Usman Dembele. So first thing, my back five is the same. If Araujo cannot play, if he still has a little bit of discomfort, I would put Koundé at the center back position and bring in Sergi Roberto. Actually... I think I would actually put Baldi at right back and then play Jordi Alba at left back. That's what I would do instead. I don't know why I said I should say Roberto first. Now, in the midfield three, I'm in my mind, I'm starting Kessier. He played very well against the hotel. Full 90 minutes, two assists and a goal. You have to back that up. And also, I think we don't have to play our strongest lineup even though we did a full rotation. I think Gavi came on, played half an hour, so I'd give him a little bit of a rest. I'd bring in Kessier, have De Jong in the pivot, and Pedri on the left. If De Jong is not fit and cannot play or cannot start, the match at least i would put in busquets as a direct replacement but still play that midfield so either de jong Kessier, or pedri or busquets Kessier, and pedri and finally my front three is going to be our front our three only fit forwards right now rafinha or you know eligible players of course rafinha ansu and dembele my idea is is that if we go with this four in the midfield against like a 5-4-1 it's going to be very small very very compact and in the end we're going to end up switching to the 4-3-3 to be more attacking i want to go on the front foot go all out attack at the beginning get a few goals and then be a bit conservative i want to be you know, getting those goals in the first half as soon as possible, break down Hatafe, because if we need to, you know, pick up the spade, pick up the uh, momentum, try, you know, go more attacking, then you can be adapt more adaptable. I think starting with the four, you can waste substitutions very, very easily. And that's the lineup that I would select for this match. But of course, let me know down in the comments below. Would you rather pick my lineup or Chavi's lineup? Time now for my score prediction. What do I believe the result will be in this match? We're on good form, good momentum, good run. I see absolutely nothing but a Barcelona win, especially at the Camp Nou. Will it be easy? No. Do I see it, you know, being a 5 0 Seota? No. I think it'll be difficult for Barcelona to break Hitafe down initially. But once we do break them down, I think the floodgates will surely open up a little bit for Barcelona and I have got Barcelona win this match by three goals to nil I think the clean sheet is very much guaranteed in this match unless Katafe get a big counter-attack and you know Unal or by Borja Mayoral get on the score sheet but I think we can have a very strong defense of course our full back line will be there except for Otto how maybe he could end up starting but I do think Barcelona should be walking away very, very comfortable here. I think even a draw in this match would be a huge disappointment. First game of 2023 at the Camp Now, You have to leave the fans off on a good note. Last time we played in the Derby, dropped 1-1, leave red cards and everything. I was very, very disappointed. So you have to leave the fans on the right foot tonight. And I do think the club will do that and the players as well on the pitch. And I have got Barcelona win this match by three goals to nil. But of course, let me know your score predictions down in the comments below. So that's a match preview for Barcelona versus Getafe in La Liga. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and of course leave me your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discussed. But the main thing I want to first see, of course, is your score prediction. And secondly, on those lineups. Firstly, you would rather pick my lineup or Chabi's lineup. What do you think Chabi would go with? What would you go with? You're the manager. Leave me all your thoughts down below. And of course, make sure you guys subscribe down below as well if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for the live watch along. Set the reminder on the screen and come and join me watch the game with me. Follow share for the match by my match review. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Big game ahead, nothing but the three points. Take care and force a Barca. Oh,